Time calculator, I think. Whoa, how does it work? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, what if we just punch random numbers into it? All right, go for it. A negative 150 million. Whoa. Uh, equal. Whoa, where, where are, are we? we? <laughs> <laughs> Close. Yeah, that yeah, was close. <laughs> okay, so we know how that works. Oh, when you going, you're crying, your mama. <laughs> yeah, are you? Well, you guys are just bullies. <laughs> well, you guys are just bullies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what the? Who are who, you supposed to be? Yeah, who are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. <laughs> ah! Do me a favor, next time you turn in your homework assignment, don't write vengeance on it. So, maybe that was a bit, uh, too far back. Yeah, we should probably go to, like, 1770 American history. Oh, yeah, then we won't have to study for a social studies test. Oh, <laughs> let's go. All right. Whoa! <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay, this, this doesn't seem so bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was close. Oh that was my god. Very close. Give me all your money. Okay, 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 I will. Let me just get the money. Come on. Hurry up. Stop right there. Huh? Put that money, give that money back to him now. I'm night thief. Just doing my job. Okay, so I think it was a bad idea going pretty much into the past at all. How about we go to the future? That's a good idea. Then we'll already be school graduates. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Alright. 
Whoa, Whoa this looks cool. Wh this what is that? Whoa. Okay, maybe we should just throw this, maybe we should just uninstall this app. Alright, yeah, so I am done with this. Yeah, let's see. Alright. Alright, cool. <laughs> Way to attack, uh, we need to defend ourselves. So, what do you have for what do you have in the bag that will protect us? Okay, let's see. I forget about a lot of things that I put in here because I've got so much stuff in here. Okay, let's see here. Scabbers, how did you get in there, Peter Pettigrew? What does that do to protect us? Oh, it's just so he doesn't get back to you know who and you know try to help him, evil rat. Turns into hu it's a human that turns into a rat. You know, one of those guys. Yeah. So I'll just stuff him back in the bag. Can't let him out. <laughs> what do I have this for? Oh yeah, from home. Why did I bring this in the first place? It's not like we have TVs here. Useless book, just in case. It, like I can put a charm on it, so when I can do it, whatever I do to the what poison I'm burning at, it, it can be like uh. A, does I have to, they have to do that or something so that we're not hurt? Uh, right, 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 right. What is that? Jinxed it so anyone other than me or you touches it, they get like a jinx or a hex on them. So something that they don't want to touch. Okay, let's see. What else do I have in here? Hmm. Okay, yeah, there might be fire that we need to put out, so yeah, we got this. Oh, wow. They could be useful, but it's heavy. <laughs> that explains why the bag is so heavy all the time. But I also do put a lot of books in there. <laughs> what else do I have? Marker? <laughs> oh, yeah, so I can point to the way we went, except it's actually the opposite way, so it confuses him. Oh, reverse psychology. Get that down there. Now let's see what else is in here. Another one of those jinxed items. Uh, wait, did I jinx it? I don't remember. I don't think we did. I did. I don't think I did. No, wait, no. It was just decoy. I can put a jinx on it later. Okay. Or like have it come to life or something, make it bigger. Else is in here. It, what's this? Huh? What is this? How? Do, what do you use that for? Uh, I think it's like an infinity gauntlet. Power, a non-magical, powerful thingy. Let's see. Uh. Oh yeah, that just blasted a hole in the ceilings. Ceiling. Let's see. Let me try to find my wand in there so I can repair that. Ah, uh, yeah, Elder Wand. Eh, that will work. Dumbledore gave it to me like last, like, beginning of this term. Repacto, or whatever this spell is. Pretend that's the spell. Okay. Yeah. Next thing, wait. Other side, other side. Wow, that's gonna do a lot of damage. Yeah, so hopefully I have something in there to help us clean up. But hey, that will be useful. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. What is that? Stress ball? For what? Stress. This is gonna be stressful. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. Oh. What do I need to take? 
Oh yeah, right. I've got like the Marauder's map in case he ends up ripping it. So he's still know where he is. If it gets ripped, we can tape it back together. Okay. Even though it's doubtful, it will be ripped. Saying it is a magical item. I honestly don't know. All I know is that our professor before Professor Lupin, remember him, the one yeah. that was werewolf. Mm -hmm. All I know is that he helped to create the map. Uh huh? Oh yeah, I could put a jinx on it to make it look real, so he thinks someone's head had been chopped off. Oh my goodness, what is that? Mannequin head. Wow. Hey, you can make it look like someone so he thinks that he wanted to kill, so he thinks it was killed for him, so he'll be mad. And then go looking for that person while we sneak up behind him. Or something like that. So I don't know if he'll fall. And we can try. Okay, yeah. Good, I have something to help us clean up this mess after. What was your favorite new food that you tried here in the U.S.? Um, steak. Steak? <laughs> yeah, steak. Yeah? yeah? How do you like it cooked? Um, I like it well done. My first name is um, Kevin, K-E-V-I-N. It's not a very common name, but like, a p <laughs> but like I've seen a couple of people have it. Okay, is this thing working? Okay, this thing is working. Where are you from? Um, Lake Orion, Michigan. I've grown. I've been here, but like my entire life. Ah, uh, you're you're the first of our our interviewees to actually say that. <laughs> Do you have a favorite food? Uh, mac and cheese. Do you have a favorite movie? Um, my favorite movie is Wally. Oh yeah. Why do you like Wally? Um, I love like technology and robots, and I just think that the movie's really cute. Um, last name is Cox C O X. Very important. <laughs> And and that's also like the name of a company somewhere I think I don't know. Do you have a hobby of some sort? Um, I actually like to code. Um, I like to draw. I like to play D and D, and I like to basically make stuff. I have a question. What is D and D? <laughs> I mean, I used to do softball, but 
after the season, I don't know, like, I don't want to do any more sports. The mm-hmm. balls seem to be ma- have a magnetic connection to my legs. Like, almost every game I'd be hit a few times. <laughs> it was a miracle if there was a single time I batted and I wasn't hit. Spider-Man No Way Home is about our character, Spider-Man, also known as Peter Parker, has been blamed for attacking Mysterio. He's a bad guy. <laughs> And also Doctor Strange, making sure no one knows him at the end. My favorite part in the movie is probably when Wally goes into space. Michigan. Why are you here in Michigan? Well, uh, my, my dad got a new job for some reason. <laughs> and uh, we had to go here for some reason. Zombies, skeletons, and basically any other creatures. There's also such as oozes, which are basically blobs. For some strange reason, I feel like watching it move would be satisfying. Or what is your favorite food? I've got a few. Sushi, um, Doritos, New York-style pizza. I've got like 10,000. So Tom Holland would be the actor you like? That's affirmative. A lot of stuff happens. Like, like you date a skeleton. (laughs) (laughs) You literally date a skeleton. (laughs) The year I was born, I was going to Disney. I've been so many times, I don't even know how many times I've been. I like pierogies with sour cream. Yeah. I never really had pierogies with sour cream, I think. Other maybe have been like a dessert. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to our show. I'm I'm your host, Kevin Cox, and today we have a lovely guest here. Um, could you please state your name? Uh, Lucas Bevilacqua. Long last name. Yeah. Ah, h- how do you spell that last name? That's really re- interesting. B E V I L A C Q U A. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. Wh- where wh- where where are you from? Uh, I am from Brazil. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Is it is it di- is it a lot different from from here? Would you think? I mean, depends where you're going because there's lots of places that seem just like the USA, but yeah. But, but there are some places that are different. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's more. There's some places that there's more homelessness. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That is that is a problem in yeah, yeah, some yeah. places of the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, we had a discussion topic for this for this, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so we're we're gonna talk about the the video game Minecraft. <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know, it's basically like help me out here. It's uh, a video game with that involves building and uh, yeah, that's hard to define, but it's pretty much like like some sort of survival game, you know? Yeah. 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 And you can create things, and there's different. There's two different modes, creative mode and survival mode, which Kevin pretty much was talking about. Yeah. Where you pretty much have to save yourself by not dying <laughs> in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. just not. Just pro tip in Minecraft: don't die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then creative is just anything you want to do. Yeah, because you can't die, <coughs> so you don't really have to worry about that. Anyway, so wh- what do you, there are a lot of there are a lot of different mobs. What do you think is your is your favorite is your most favorite mob in, in Minecraft? I like creepers. I like. I mean, the I mean, I guess explosions. I guess that is seeable. Like they are the mascot of Minecraft and mm-hmm. all. Yeah. But I don't I don't really like how they just blow up stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like that, just that like having start s- having stuff blown mm-hmm. up is not fun. Yeah, but I just like to like. Let them tick, and then I run away from them. Yeah. Okay, I mean that is pretty satisfying when you actually manage to pull it off. That mm-hmm. yeah, that's satisfying. Yeah. And um, my my personal favorite mob. Let me think. I didn't actually decide on that. Honestly, I like dogs. Dogs. Or, 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 or technically, they're called wolves, but who really cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> like they're awesome. Mm-hmm. They just you just. You just like them. Mm-hmm. Then again, the the warden in the new 1.19 update is also really cool. Mm, the warden, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, cause like, it is like the strongest mob in the history of ever. Mm-hmm. What else? And 
And honestly, the 1.19 update in general <coughs> was pretty interesting. Like, like Skulk, now we have literally undetectable traps. Yeah. Because you can just hide Skulk underground, mm -hmm. and the mere footsteps of a player approaching will trigger it. Yeah. So, like, that could be interesting in, in like, PvP or other servers. Because, mm -hmm. like, that's pretty... Because, like, you, you can never detect a trap with the Skulk. Yeah. <coughs> it's interesting. But and there are other Skulk blocks, like... <coughs> like, the Catalyst, the Catalyst. Skulk Catalyst, mm -hmm. which, like, activates every time, like, a mob dies near it. And, like, I think there's one other thing that, that actually summons the Warden. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's you do not want to go near Warden. <gasps> mm -hmm. That is that is brought up. <gasps> yeah. So why do you think Minecraft is still in like the one point type of place? Like why wouldn't it be up in like two or something like that? Because I'm I, not sure about that. I I honestly don't know why Mojang did that because I'm not Mojang and mm -hmm. I have never been associated with anyone working in Mojang. But um. My guess, like, I don't know, they, they want it to seem, like, consistent, I guess. Make mm -hmm. smaller versions, I guess, and not make it such big different versions, because instead of making version 2.0, 3.0 every single time. Oh, uh, yeah, because then uh, that will lead to 19.0, which doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> So it's kind of like a, a lot of things to add together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, like the ancient cities, you know that that underground structure. Yeah. Like, like first off, we finally we finally got a new underground structure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what was the last one? Like, it was either the dungeon or the abandoned mine shaft. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. those are the only things you really find. So, and like. The ancient cities are awesome. And y you know that, like, big portal thing? Yeah, the big portal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. S turns out there's actually a small chance that a chest can appear there. And w and the ch the chest can only ever have one item in it. Can you guess what this item is? Uh, not too sure. Um, I'm right. not very good at guessing items. A single golden carrot. That is what is in that chest. <laughs> Just a golden carrot. A golden carrot? Nothing. Wow. And nothing else, just a golden carrot. <laughs> so, what do you think about future Mojang, like, uh, I don't know, updates? What do you think could happen? I think, I think they need to revamp jungles, mm -hmm. because jungles are just that one place that has the temple, which never shows up, yeah. and oh, oh cool, they have pandas and bamboos. And, oh, yeah, they have cocoa beans, which you make cookies from. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the jungles. Yeah. And and they're mainly known for the cool trees. But, like, they need to add some more stuff. Like, I'm thinking monkeys. Monkeys? Oh, like, yeah, that'd be interesting. Monkeys, like, they like they could, like, they can, like, hop from vine to vine if they're near each other. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty cool. Or maybe they could introduce a swinging vine. I mean, that would be very hard to code, but, like... I don't know. Yeah, it would. It would. Yeah, cause because of Minecraft. Also. Yeah. So, base. Also, you know, you know how fireflies were rejected for yeah. the one point nineteen update. Mm -hmm. It's not because they weren't too hard to code. It's because apparently, in real life, when frog, when frogs eat some sort of. Oh, oh shoot! We are, we are running low on time. Um. So that that's gonna be it for the for this episode. Um, th thank you for com for thank you for coming on to our show. And and all of you have a good night. Hello, welcome back to our show. And tonight's topic will be Harry Potter. Our guest tonight is Dominica, and I am Addison. So, what is your favorite thing in the Harry Potter books? In the Harry Potter books, I think, um, in general, I like the first book the best. I like the introduction to the characters. I think the way um, Harry Potter overall transitions throughout the story and the way they present magic and how the book is written is very interesting and it's very engaging overall. Yeah, what is your favorite part of book one? Um, the Sorcerer's Stone. part of book one. Um, 
I don't really, re honestly, the only scene I remember is like Harry getting in introduced to Hag Hagrid and going into in the, the in the book. Yeah, the first book. Yeah, I personally enjoy the part with the when he gets the Sorcerer's Stone or the part where he goes into the chamber because that's just action-packed. When it comes to things being action-packed, that's what always gets me hooked. Wow. In the movies, what is your favorite movie? Because they do change things a lot in the movies. I actually don't like any of the movies. <laughs> I, I'm okay. I like the movies a little, but I've only gotten as far as movie four where... Uh, what's the guy who was the other person in the Triwizard Tournament? I can never pronounce his name. Uh, that pronounce. would be... Cedric? Uh, Cedric, yeah. Cedric, uh, I only got to the end of book four just last night. Mm. But I've seen, but I've read up to, like, before he gets to Hogwarts and Order of the Phoenix before, when I was in, like, first grade, but I don't really remember. Uh, taking account, I actually read book four, and I actually really dislike book four. From I think it was really fun. It was, like, fun. Like, it's kind of like you've got to solve a mystery throughout the whole thing. I will say the one part where it was, like, a creature you would not want to kiss, that riddle, and when he's in the very last task in the Triwizard Tournament, I thought for sure it would be a Dementor. I was, like, positive it was a Dementor. Because, you know, you don't want a Dementor to kiss you because then you will have no soul. You'll die. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I never thought it would have been a spider. Yeah, but they, I just personally looking at book four, for me, it's like, it could have made all things easier. To understand? It's like, the mystery at the end, it, I personally thought it was a very cool twist overall, and I really was excited about that, but for me, it's like, Harry Potter was just being stupid, in my opinion, for book How? four. It just, it does, he basically... Things didn't add up. It just... Well, it, it made s I didn't understand a lot of it. All I understood was that he had to compete in the Triwizard Tournament and try to survive. In my opinion... And I honestly, until the end of it, I never would have thought it wasn't the real Moody. I always would have thought it was the... I always thought it was the real Moody. I mean, I never would have thought he was actually a Death Eater because of the fact he was helping Harry. I didn't realize that was so he could get to the end so Baltimore could try to kill Harry, or as they like to call it in the book, Harry and a few other characters and they like to call him Baltimore. He who sh must not be named or you know who. Okay. Um, it just taking, I just personally think that book four could have been made so much easier to if just Harry stuff. Potter was willing to do magic rather than get in trouble. And overall I just think throughout the series everything could have been made easier if he just talked to Dumbledore about the problems. Yeah, that but then, be, then it wouldn't have been as interesting. It wouldn't be as interesting, but still, take it, it just from a logical perspective. It but he was breaking the rules and he didn't want Dumbledore to find out, because then he would have gotten in trouble. He's literally the chosen one. True. He, uh, you have to take that into account. You could still make an interesting True. story. I mean, Dumbledore is giving him things to help him break the rules, including uh, the invisibility uh, Exactly, cloak. exactly. I mean, Dumbledore is basically letting him go on a rampage and basically bring in a troll and having literally, like, It snake. was not Dumbledore who brought in the troll. That was actually Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, it was Professor, uh, oh, what was his name? That was the one from the Sorcerer's Stone. Yeah, I, I can't remember yeah. what his name was. Um... I Whatever the evil professors who, the evil professor who wore the turban's name was. Uh, it's just like take this account. You have a job description. Dumbledore is your employer. Why would you hire every single time an evil professor just to make? Well, he didn't know a lot of times that they were evil. He had no clue that the, or did he? Because there is a fan theory that Dumbledore is actually Ron Weasley in an older age. That's, uh... Well, they have this, a lot of the descriptions in the book give them a lot of the same descriptions, like the scar on their knee, same spot. Each one of them has one. And when Dumbledore was younger, he had the exact same hair color as Ron Weasley. Later in book four, they describe hair, Ron having a longer nose. Dumbledore has a very long nose. Everything, everything to turn time back was destroyed in book five. That would was? not be possible. That would not be possible to time travel back. It's fair for Ron Weasley could not have been Dumbledore. How would that work exactly? Maybe he managed to get a hold of a 
time thing that wasn't but destroyed. It's like J.K. Rowling destroyed every single one of them because in book three... There might have been one that was unknown. Book three, basically, it just she didn't want to confuse the reader about it. Yes, it is a possibility, but I think J.K. Rowling destroyed it just to not have this entire multiverse complex thing because time traveling and writing time traveling overall is it's very confusing like just with the time turner i had a hard time following it personally in the movie with the time turner ron's reaction was pretty much what my reaction would have been except i would have been freaking out way more but i would also be like what just happened what the heck is going on I mean, that's one of the reasons why she destroyed all of them, just to not make it as confusing for the viewer. And yeah. Overall, it's just like... Uh, Plus, it was also very hard for the person doing it to make sure that they didn't see themselves. Because then they would go crazy, because their past self may injure their future self or even murder them. Um, I wouldn't go ahead with murder. or Maybe insanity, yeah, sure, but... I'll also be taking account they will have spells to protect that, especially since they gave it to a student. Well, they the student was they assured that the student would only be using it for studies. Yeah, so Hermione. they didn't think that she'd be going back in time and trying to save Sirius Black like she did. Yeah, yeah, which is. I wish that they had found that Peter Pettigrew didn't turn back into a rat and then go back to Voldemort, because then. Sirius would have been found innocent, and Harry would never have to go back to the Dursleys, who, just even in the book, I can't stand them. They're so mean to him. It's Which is unfair. It's cruel. It's abuse, quite literally. It's they li are literally trying to starve him. They're barely giving him enough food to live. Which is abuse. And taking account of Dumbledore let him live there, let's just take that into account. He knows the situation Harry is in, since he literally had under the closet on his letter. Well, you could take into account, but he may not be. Well, he did have people there to make sure to pretty much spy on him, which is kind of creepy uh, to watch him to make sure nothing bad happened to him. But in the fifth book, the Ministry of Magic, since they're against Dumbledore, Cornelius Fudge is just evil, pure evil. Uh, it's cool. Harry was doing self-defense. They didn't believe that he was doing self-defense since they didn't believe that he could even cast a pat Patronum. Patronum. Mm. Because well, that is, he learned it when he was 13, and he was only 15, and even some of the most advanced wizards had, strugg had struggled with that. Well, all right, but still, Dumbledore could have taken him in, into the Hogwarts world, and all of this would not have happened. He could have taken him as a child and not have <laughs> made Harry go through all this abuse. Yeah. He could have just lived with Hagrid. Yeah. Yeah, that that would just, it would have made it a lot easier on Harry and everyone. But that is the end of our show tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night. We'll see you next time. Welcome back to another episode of Orion Today. Today I am with... Ethan Kelch. And today we're going to be talking about video games. I am your host, Dominika Damanik, and I heard that you like to play Borderlands. That is formative. Uh, would you like to tell me more about it? All right, so it's a game where where you go to different dimensions in this machine called Hyperion. It takes you to different dimensions and... Would you like me, would you like to explain more about mm -hmm. these dimensions? Like, do we change like, like in so, the scene? So these dimensions, like, they're different planets. So, like, the planets are for missions that you're supposed to accomplish. And, and when you're done with those missions, you get money for it. So, how do you utilize that money after that? Um, you can probably use that money to buy weapons or grenades. And why do you need weapons on going to adventures to different planets? Be because those are for leveling up. And <laughs> why do you need to like to unlock different planets? Would you need to go and 
level up for that specific planet or do you just kind of just go depending on the difficulty? Probably difficulty. Okay. Um, so what are some of the challenges of playing Borderlands? So what the challenges are is that that you need to defeat bosses and stuff. And also, and also give stuff to people for for other missions. So, by defeating these bosses, do you need like specific skills, do, or do you just need specific weapons or a certain um, level? Specific weapons. Specific weapons. Um, so you just give them by completing missions. Are they like bounty? You kind of being like a bounty yeah. hunter kind yeah, of. Yeah, they're like. Bounty, mm -hmm. like bounty honors. Okay, so is it like, if you were to think about like the game in whole, would you think it's more of like based on heavily on story or is it more like combat based? It's more like combat based, apparently. And do you just kind of like think of like GTA and more of those shooting games is just like the better you get by playing is just by like practicing more. Mm -hmm. Do you also have like teams too or? Um, you can go solo player if you want and it's kind of like online where you have to go meet up with some friends and then play online. Um, is it harder or do they like make the levels harder if you play it, online? Or it is just it makes like the levels harder when you play mm. or if you have like a weak uh, weak weapon. And so, did your friends ever like come over and play? Do you just play on one console? I, I just play on one console. And then, do you just connect with um, strangers online, or is it just like certain people? I just play with friends. Okay. Um, so, what is Borderlands most similar to, other than just like because it kind of reminds me of like this. What? It might be similar to like Grand Theft Auto with the weapons and stuff. Ah, okay. And and when you and it's not like when you fall you take fall damage like in Minecraft and stuff. So with Grand Theft Auto you can just um I actually played a couple of times with um my friend back in Poland and is it like you can still customize your character, uh -huh. right, and other uh -huh. stuff? And do you still need to control the ship which you have to go? Because I know in Graphic Auto you have to control a car and have some car skills with that. Um, actually, there's this factory in on a ship, and what that does is it takes you to different dimensions on the ship, like Pandora. Ne Promethea, eight and six in Necrofeo, but but in DLCs there's different planets to go to. And what's your favorite DLC? Um, Handsome Jackpot. And why? It's because of all the monies and stuff in the gambles. Wait, so you can gamble in this game? <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do you usually need to gamble? Do you just gamble money for bigger um, amounts of money or can you gamble weapons and such? You just use these like pickaxe thingies and then you just destroy the machine and then money pops out. That sounds like robbery. <laughs> because you destroy the, um, is it like a ma lot machine thing mm -hmm. or? A slot machine, mm-hmm. And uh, do you just come by it or do you have to go to a place which is like you just have to go near it okay um what's your favorite dimension promethea because it made me thought of creating a game like that oh so do you plan on like creating a game just kind of set in that world or is there like specific features of that like well, well, I think of code, coding, that kind of stuff. Oh, you're planning to take, like, coding, like, computers? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have, um, do you have already some experience in that, or? Not necessarily. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you ever do, like, block coding in, like, elementary or middle school? Middle school. 
Hmm. Okay. Well, taking advantage of your account, did you like create any games with it? Because we've been offline for like a year or so, and I personally took coding that year. So, um, <coughs> did you choose to do game design in sixth grade? Um, actually, seventh grade. Oh, okay. So, um, in seventh grade, what, did you like create any specific games or? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it, could you like give me any names or? Um, Hello Mod Kid. It's like this. T it's where you go to content and then you type for an item that you want to collect and put it into your game. <coughs> okay, so Hello Market would be like using only using items and just putting it into a game. Do yeah. you like assets? Do you just put it into your code or? Mm -hmm. how? Yeah, it's kind of like access. Oh, okay. Um, but if but if you get caught by your neighbor if you play, um, there will be a automatic error. Like you just have to keep on playing until you like get it's like when you go to your neighbor's ba basement or if you have a cranky neighbor down the street and he doesn't like being around people so it's like hello neighbor yeah yeah, yeah. okay that's what I was trying to say hello welcome back to the welcome to the very first episode of how much is it worth where somebody comes in and tells us and tells us these things that they think are valuable and we see if they are real and how much and tell them how much they are worth I'm the I am your host Addison Lynn and our guest here today is Gabriella Warwick Okay, so what thing would you like me to examine first today, Gabriella? So, um, I would like you to examine this. I found it in a puddle, and I just kept it not really knowing, like, if it's what, real or not. Yeah, if it was fake or not, or, like, is it real? Yeah, basically. So, yeah. May I see? Okay. Hmm. Based off what I am reading on this, the title on it there is a thing that literally says it is this representation of wealth is not legal tender it's the sole intent is promotional that says it's fake it is probably worth about hang on doesn't feel real money money million nope dollars thirty cents dollar or fifty cents somewhere between fifty cents and a dollar not a million dollars like it says this. It is fake. Okay, so the next thing. Oh wait, hang on, let me show people this. <laughs> this is fake. It only worth about one dollar. So I found this thing in the road. Um, it was kind of coming towards me and then I caught it and I saw something beeping at the bottom of it and I saw two people playing with it and they were wearing sunglasses. So, I think it may be a spy device. Yes, probably. I'm not sure what it was for though, but I don't know, it just looked like it was coming towards me. Okay, camp. Away again. The timing that it says it was made right here is obviously fake. It was, it, it seems to be made j very recently. Based off on the back, anything that has a camera I can log into and see. Plus it also has its own built-in camera that I can create an account to see anything I want when I throw it. So this thing is worth about, this frisbee is not a frisbee. 
it is actually a spying device. You throw it, it kind of flies around like a drone, and it spies on someone. You can have it go up all so high that it can even be above the clouds and see through the clouds and give you a perfect view of the people. It is worth about a million dollars. So the worth of it's worth this. So that is pretty much worthless. This has a very high worth. So this is what th is worth what if it, this were real, it would it's worth what that would be. The next thing I have is this robot. It used to be my grandfather's, but he passed away and it's just been in my attic for a long time. We're not really sure what it does, but sometimes in the middle of the night we hear it crashing up in the attic. Have you ever checked to see what the crashing was? No, we haven't because we were too sleepy and it just we didn't want to go up there in case okay. it was creepy. So may I examine it? Sure. Sorry. That that Is that close to what the noise you heard was? Yes, actually. This seems to be a self-defense machine. You turn it on back here to make it look like a toy. You open up this. This is actually a blast thing and it can tell if you're a dangerous person or not. Oh, and it seems it can also move on its own with the wheels on the bottom. I did not notice that until just now. It does that and if it does sense a dangerous person nearby, it goes near them. This is activated, so when I turn it on, it knows you're not a dangerous person. It's very intelligent. It starts blasting at them. That's just to threaten them. That's just to show you how powerful it is if it knows you're a good person in case, so it shows it can protect you. I'm gonna turn this back off so it doesn't waste its solar energy. Solar powered, I'm assuming there's windows in your attic since it still has power? Yes, there. Yes, it has self-defense. It like slaps people across the face with these weird hands. No offense, robot. Um, this opens up also if you touch the right things or create a code by saying a certain thing when you have this pressed. It also opens up to become a vault. It seems your grandfather invented it. It says nowhere where it was manufactured. It says something about your grandfather, I'm pretty sure. So I think he invented it himself to protect the family. So worth about $10,000. And I'm pretty sure if you go to some sort of place, it will be able to tell you what the code is while you're there so that you can get see if there's anything inside that is of value, AKA some sort of money or something that is not fake like your $1 million bill. Um, so this last object or objects that I'm gonna bring up are these um, rock things in a cup. I don't know where they came from. I just, one day I was rummaging through my attic and I found them and they looked pretty interesting. May I examine? Okay. The rocks themselves appear to be just like from a beach, worthless. Cup, three dollars. So about three dollars worth of stuff with this. Um, next, what would you like me to examine? This, Gabby. Um, so, I kind of, this, the last, last thing this, this, is, Gabby. This, this, over here, I don't know where this came from, it's just, I don't know, was in my attic too, I, just spring cleaning, I, no By idea where this stuff, came. Some of it of worth, some of it not of worth, in your attic, I, here, I'm seeing. Yes, um, and yeah, I don't know where this came from. It's just there. See 
doing, Blast? <laughs> okay, this appears to be the very Infinity Gauntlet the Avengers used and Thanos used to bring back the people and Thanos to bring back half of the world and Thanos to make half of it disappear. Oh, wow. But that seems to be all I have time to tell you what it's worth. This seems to be worth about... <sighs> $10 million. Oh, wow. But that is all for today. Thank you for coming and having me tell you what some of this stuff is worth. And thank you for watching the very first episode of What Is It Worth? Thank you and good night and goodbye.